I'm going to do quick introductions of the panelists, and then we're, we're basically just going to get into the conversation here. I've known Stefano uh, for a couple of years now, and Stefano is the founder and CEO of DCave. He's the chairman of Margella, and he's the president of LR Vincenza. Um, yeah, don't say this in Venice. Because <laughs> I know, I know. I'm not allowed they, to say it here, but... They're you know. doing better than us. <laughs> Francesca Versace is the chief creative officer of Public Pressure, a Web3 community building company as well, uh, uh, excuse me, a Web3 music um, platform. They've been a huge sponsor of Tectalia for the last, I think it's the last two years. And they were uh, in Rome uh, with us, and last year in Milan. They're uh, actually all three of them are members of the Tectalia Advisory Board. And Francesca was extremely involved last year, and this year has been very helpful in bringing together uh, the wedding club to uh, Venice to help make sure that our decorations are amazing at the dinner. They've scheduled the after party for us and our photographer was bought by the wedding club. So thank you, Francesca, for that. And Julia is the uh, founder and CEO of Public Pressure and also an advisory board member. And uh, we have Dan Dan Lee, who's the founder of Pop Shop Live, flying, as I said, all the way in from LA. And Pop Shop Live is a live streaming app in the States, raised a ton of money. She sold it uh, about a month and a half ago and is now continuing to grow the business. So let's get into it. Hopefully I didn't butcher those introductions at all. If, if I did, um, blame it on uh, uh, my brother, not me, I don't know. So uh, Raymond Schillinger, not Gabriel Schillinger. Like, it's a joke that everybody always likes to say, right? <laughs> so we were promised to be living in a digital world at this point. Digital goods were supposed to be outstripping the physical world. What happened? Uh, are, is that where we're at right now? Or obviously not, but what happened? Were we too early? And how do you see physical and digital in the current environment and in the future? And we can start with uh, Julia from uh, Public Pressure on that. But I the, the reality is that it's working. No, oh, yeah, it's yes, working. Okay. No, the reality is like uh, sorry. Uh, it's, it's working. It's, it's, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, the connection is here and it's happening. Like it's we 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 are in a in a digital world, but at the same time. Um, it's about like uh, what you're doing with the digital. Like uh, we, we, we did some um, amazing um, NFTs, uh, for example, with uh, with diesel, and uh, we connect the the part of digital with the physical. So it's there, and it's uh, it's everywhere, and not only in Web three, but in uh, also in Web two with uh, with other projects. So. So it's a continuation, really, from, I mean, Stefano, what, what, I mean, you guys partnered together yes. on creating um, a new experience, right? Can you walk us through, through that and how you connected both the physical and digital world? Yes, well, um, I think, as you said, that we probably, we all ran into it. And the rush was uh, the gold rush. So going after the money, after the easy uh, revenues, the easy profit. <clears throat> and this was, I think, uh, a big mistake because um, we totally uh, put the carrot in front thinking that it was the landing spot. Uh, but as a matter of fact, the environment was not ready. The mass adoption of technologies were not ready. And Web3 processes that I believe are super strong and fundamental for the future of our lives because they give certainty on digital property. Um, we didn't give enough time to this to develop properly and you know, embrace the mass adoption from the masses. And w when you say enough time, I, I want to focus in on that. And, and, and I have a question for Francesca after that. Do you think you know, enough time is that 
18 months? Or is everybody thinking by 2023 that we'd all be you know, uh, trading in NFTs and, or excuse me, digital items? Um, enough time, how long is enough time? No, I, I don't think you can measure it in time. I think it's measurable in KPIs. And for me, the, the key KPI is that if I, my grandma or my old aunt will be able to own a digital asset, that's when everybody will basically manage and own digital assets and utilize a wallet and probably pay in crypto or uh, you know, <coughs> digital coin. But we're not there yet. So until we don't get there, I think uh, it's, uh, it, there are not yet the scale uh, to become interesting and really become uh, you know, the, the next future of, uh, of this society. So Francesca, public pressure and diesel partnered to create uh, a capsule collection that uh, was launched earlier this year. Can you walk us through a little bit of the concept behind it, what you were, expected, what you were expecting together as working on this process, and then the outcome? Just a little bit. Hold on, can we make sure Francesca's mic is working? Try it again. You want to give? Yes. We'll get the mic working. Apologize about that. So these things happen here uh, at Tectalia. It's luckily it's an intimate experience. It's not. It's not so tech. It's not so tech. So <laughs> now, funny story about this is last year, if you guys remember, Dan, Dan, you weren't here, but last year we didn't have Wi-Fi at the venue. So and we and it. And it, you know, I was thinking, I was like, we're having these wonderful conversations, but none of us could connect on the phones. And we had to do a live streaming panel, and I somehow convinced someone there to lend me their phone, and we were able to do it. Thank God it was during lunch, but it was like jumpy and everything, but we got the mic back, so it's, it's working. Are we, are we good? Up. Oh. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Wait, they say two times the chance. Up. Oh, yeah, there is try. something. Hello. Okay. Just speaking to it. Perfect. Okay. You have another one. Huh? Yeah, you have another one. So that's why we're, we're trying. Hello, hello. Yes. Okay. <laughs> there we go. There we go. I know I have two mics. So, uh, yeah. So, 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 so walk, us, walk us through that. I mean. So we started um, to do like, um, you know, three um, really different experience with Diesel. So we started, the first drop was uh, uh, with Honey Love. It's a DJ, DJ World producer. So we had this uh, um, audio NFT, and she was producing uh, a limited, uh, unlimited uh, um, audio. And, uh, and then the second one was uh, Kitty Cash, and she was wearing this uh, amazing um, skirt and, and top of uh, diesel designed. And, oh, sorry, Honey Love was like the cover of the... Uh, of the audio was uh, produced by Nick Paranoia, which was a visual artist that she, he was he was like emerging visual artist, and we gave import importance to him. And uh, at the end, um, Diesel put him on the on the cover, and um, and then the second one was Kitty Cash, so wearing this amazing uh, Diesel clothing, and uh, having her own um, unlimited um, uh, audio. And then the third one was. Um, um, uh, this um, uh, this amazing NFT in the metaverse metaver world, and basically the the, um, the NFT was like uh, it's all about utility, and you were given like a free uh, access to the fashion show that Diesel performed in September, which was a, a great show, and uh, so there were this some, September, right? Yeah, Just this like, like September, a month ago yeah. in Milan, yeah. two weeks ago. Yeah, two, yeah. Oh God, and two weeks uh, and ago. And public pressure and Diesel, we started talking about all these projects already two years ago, Stefano. Yeah, you know, maybe, I more. Think maybe more. It was three in Rome. Years in Rome. Rome. Oh, it was three in Rome. years ago. Oh, three years so here's ago. The, so here's the, the, the technology yeah. connection, right? It's, it, so, so, so impact was made. So the Web3 really goes fast, and then yeah. the work behind it is such a huge work, and to connect all these words, you know. Was it stressful? To, um, a bit, but now we are really enjoying it. And, and from, the com from the side of the diesel side and the side of the public pressure side, uh, I'm assuming Stefano was, was the glue to help push things along. Yeah. But, I mean, 
all of you come from a fashion background and you know the, the intricacies of dealing with you know, fashion brands, what was the, the conversations like inside Diesel and then the conversations of public pressure to get everything on the timelines? Who, who to push it, as I'm, I'm wondering? I mean, it was like uh, nonsense at the beginning. We were <laughs> talking about everyone was like, had different ideas and to put all this brainstorm, like it was, it was not easy, but then once you really were enjoying to this digital physical experience, uh, you know, it, it, it was a great uh, come out. So we, we were excited to do more. With the are there more? Well. Are there? Are there? Yeah. Are, are, is OTB planning more? Of course. I mean, we we need to. But you know, the interesting part I think of the collaboration, the partnership was that we started from the necessity and the vision of the brand. The brand wanted to be more present in the music environment, and uh, public pleasure pressure and a great uh, community around their music NFTs, and we decided that it made sense to have an innovative way to portray music inside the digital world. So it was a natural combination. Then, of course, when you start and try to do something innovative into an environment that is not used to it, that's when, you know, all type of problems arise. Legal... Uh, yeah, that part was uh, kind of... <laughs> right. Challenging. Uh, challenging, yeah. yeah. Yeah, challenging. But, but I think the beauty to bring Web3 to fashion brands and Web2 brands is to talk to new communities at the end because Web3 is all about communities. So now we are talking to small communities that are mainly in uh, gaming, and, uh, but the future, as you said, is like uh, to attract a bigger community. That's why fashion brands that are known uh, all over the world are trying to bring the mass adoption to Web3. That is uh, the big challenge for, the, for Web3. That's, we're trying to do. And you touched on a good point there, Julia, about communities. I wanted to have Dan Dan really talk about this idea of community, and it kind of pushes our conversation forward into the, you know, the points that we were discussing on the phone today. And yeah. So Pop Shop Live, uh, can you walk us through, and I, and I remember from the, you know, also looking back, Emily Chang at Bloomberg, the interview that you had on Bloomberg, discussing how when Pop Shop Live came out during the height of the pandemic and, and you had a marketplace of sellers um, selling on the app and you know, it, it, it grew and you built this incredible community. Um, walk us through that a little bit. Yeah, uh, there's a story that I share in the interview, probably that's what you refer to. Um, so in the beginning of pandemic, uh, when a lot of stores have to close down in LA, we use the live streaming uh, technology to help them to bring their physical business onto um, uh, make a digital presence. So we work with, um, I mean, I think the most um, primary pro uh, value prop would be they could, um, when, uh, after they close the business, they can continue to run the business using live streaming, but still maintain that um, personal connection with their customer. But I think one interesting kind of like um, side effect or like a ripple effect that actually coming after that, this is that when they, uh, after the pandemic, uh, when they close this, uh, open the store again, uh, one of our, our store got uh, 200 people lining outside of the store. The reason is because before that they were e-commerce business and with a physical storefront. But after using the live streaming for over a year, they built an online community and they turned their customers into super fans. So I think that's actually something interesting about live streaming. When you look at the evo um, evolution of medium, you have tags, you have um, uh, image, uh, photos, and you have um, short form video, and then you could also like look at uh, MR, mixed reality. I do think that live streaming is really the missing bridge between reality and also um, digital or physical and digital. If you think, of li think about live streaming, you pretty much make uh, a copy of your physical world in real time. And this is like one-to-one -one copy. And, um, but they're not that much like, uh, we're, we're definitely the pioneer and one of the leaders in the live streaming space, but you can see that especially even an, in the entertainment space, there's not much like exploration in this space. But this is definitely, uh, I do think, is the missing link. And also, um, when I think about uh, 
work, we work with creators too. So I often tell them that like you are using live streaming, you're gonna turn your following into um, community. Because following, I think the difference between following and community is that um, you're following, they only engage with the creator, but they don't get to meet each other. So right now we're in the same room, we are a community because we have this peer-to-peer -peer communication. But if you watch the live streaming or, or you, you watch um, the video without any uh, engagement with other people in the audience, that's a following. That makes sense. I mean, and it's, and it's I think from, the different point of views from each of our panelists and the different backgrounds of the industries. Um, I, I, you know, the question that I'm going to have for, for all of you coming up is, as we look at it from both a global perspective and an industry perspective, how do you see physical um, coming into the digital world that you've been creating? So Stefano, uh, D-Cave is, is a gaming business, um, video gaming. Francesca and Julia with Public Pressure is Public Pressure's music. Um, and I'd say Dan Dan, it's more catch-all, could, could actually fit all of those. So a as you think about it from a global perspective, how do you sort of see these businesses um, either going back into the more physical world or merging between the two? And, and maybe we start um, with Stefano on, on my side. Um, I think, you know, that it's, it's natural. It's like when Web2, at the early stage, we were saying that e-commerce would kill retail. It didn't happen. And as a matter of fact, e-commerce became actually the accelerator for retail and vice versa. And now both channels basically talk, communicate, and actions are mixed between the two environments. And the same, I think, will happen here. Um, the power is to understand where is the value for the community, for uh, the brand fan base, and, and that is the most difficult and complicated part of the trick. Uh, because to generate an NFT and sell it just because there is your label or your brand linked to it, maybe was not enough and is not enough. But if you link to that something that you cannot have, uh, then it becomes interesting. So if to a digital asset you link a physical good and or an experience, then it becomes something, you know, more interesting. Or the other way around. Something that we are doing now with our brands is um, linking, uh, you know, a certificate of authenticity that is written in the blockchain uh, and a certificate of prop proprietorship to a physical good. And if you think it's taking away a huge problem that big luxury brands have, that is, is this product real or fake? Is that through a consortium or is that...? Yeah, it's through our consortium. They provide a solution, but at the end, all the uh, engagement uh, and the, the activities are back to the brand. We decide what to do. They simply provide the tech behind it. And, you know, this is the most important step, is understanding what technology can provide and then adapt it to your real necessities, your real world, and or what the community wants. Or Collectibles. Yeah, we were discussing that on the, on, I think, on our pre-panel yeah, call. Yeah, 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 it's crazy that like how many people are collecting vinyl, even they don't have a, a recording machine. But We produce some vinyl for public pressure with the limited edition cool. of tracks that we give as, as gifts uh, to our partners, uh, friends, uh, music artists. And, and, and do they love it? Yeah, they love it, it. Yeah. Yeah. but going back to physical and digital, of course, the music industry is more digital. The point is like uh, being Web3 is to bring uh, the IP of Now it's not working. <laughs> Sorry. Talking about physical. Physical well, we're here, no, no, and we lost digital, the power. So, yeah. Uh, now it's yeah, we're back. Okay. Now it's working. Now we're back. So, we are back. Uh, so music we just had a glitch in the metaverse. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> fine. So uh, um, music, it's, uh, it's more digital than other industry, I would say. And uh, Web3 is... In Web3, as I said, it was, you can bring... We want to bring the IP of music on the chain that were 
you can help uh, artists uh, to understand actually how many uh, royalties they should uh, earn uh, uh, and etc cetera, etc cetera, that in web 2 you cannot have the control of your data so it's about data at the end and uh, and again it's like uh, the physical part of music are a concert, so... And have, have you done um, any partnerships with any of the concert producers? Yeah, like, uh, yeah, like we're going to do, like we are partnering with a few festivals. So we are giving utilities to festival uh, as like VIP access by NFTs or uh, meeting uh, the DJ playing at the festival. So as, uh, as Stefano said, NFTs is, uh, is all about the, the utility that you give to NFTs. It's about experience at the end. That's what, what people in community want to have. Dan Dan, yeah. I, I, I know it's you know, not so much Pop Shop Live of, of you know, NFTs, digital goods, yeah. but we were talking a little bit about <coughs> on the call, the pre-panel discussion, about how you just came back from, from Asia and we're seeing sort of the unique uh, experience there. And I'm curious how that is influencing yeah. you know, product decisions going forward at, at, at Pop Shop Live and yeah. sort of your view on um, where the future lies for physical and digital. Yeah, I'll go back to that question because I have something to add on this too. Um, I have invested in advising a, a Web3 company called Dopamine. And they, yeah, that uh, dopamine. And they actually just um, um, closed a partnership with Universal Studios, so ah. good for them. Um, and they, they're actually also like doing a really good use case combining the uh, digital world and physical world based on the demand that um, people want to authenticate a product. Mm -hmm. So it's a very simple application that uh, they put a chips on all the uh, merch, yep. and then when you scan it, you can get a really beautiful, engaging uh, experience. And then I think what's interesting is that I, if that's an entry point, like what's interesting is what can happen after that. Like secondary market, you can build community, and especially with such a big um, um, like IP, like universe, uh, Universal Studio. So I think that's really exciting. and. Um, and in terms of the experience in, in Asia, um, actually I wrote, I'm still like unpacking it now, but I do think that um, the digital experience and how convenient uh, everyone, the mobile adoption, mobile payment adoption, really changing like even the urban living uh, a lot. And I think um, that's in, um, in, especially in China and in Korea. And um, pretty much I'll say that like this time in, 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 in China, like uh, there's really, you, you would never see a queue anymore because like no matter wherever you go, um, it could be Uber or it could be any store like, uh, or even going to museum, everyone is uh, booking everything online. And that pretty much like changing all the urban planning of the entire city. So things started to change like, People will think differently, like what they use, like if it's, if it, for example, if a shopping mall is where used to be aggregate people, like people don't go there to shop and people like rethink about like what they're going to put in the mall. It has to be experience. So I'm seeing a lot of like new experience, like people even learning serving in mm. the shopping mall. It's just like a lot of new experience, like popping uh, up like all around <coughs> Asia. I have one final question for the panelists before we open up for audience questions. Um, so as we sit here and we're thinking about you know, th the future of physical and digital, do we think the most important thing is community? The context for this, I mentioned a little bit before the chat, was Paris Hilton was announced as the new uh, lead, I don't know if it's called anchor, but she's the new streamer for Elon Musk's X, which is formerly known as Twitter, for all of their live shopping experiences. So from a context of that standpoint, and community bees being so important, what, what do you think about that? And then for each of you, what do you think, uh, from a com community perspective, is it more organic, 
or is it more of celebrity involvement to get all of the things that we're working on to succeed? Yeah, to give, um, uh, I actually just look at the news uh, today to give more context. Uh, uh, Paris Hilton just uh, signed probably like a partnership with a partnership. Uh, yeah. yeah with Twitter or X. Uh, they're going to work on a live streaming shopping project. Um, I do think it's interesting. I mean, um, when we raised um, our last round, we have a lot of pretty much I have a very a lot of celebrities include in term, including like Kardashian family or Justin Bieber family. So um, we did bring in a lot of um, um, like um, part partners or uh, stakeholders from the pop culture. But to be honest, when I look at um, the, the community live streaming space, the people who are really good at, no matter for live shopping or live streaming, are the people who have the talent to build a community. It's very different from like, um, um, like a celebrity who used to be having a more like a broadcasting approach. So the best talent that we're seeing building community, they're, they're very empathetic, they're good at reading a room, they're good at building like person-to-person -person communication, and a lot of them have a background like working in a store, like talking to customer one at the same time, but right now they can scale their uh, capability of building that person personal connection to thousands of people. So I think the partnership is not just bringing in a celebrity, it's also, um, I do think pop culture makes sense in this case because you already have the a charisma to build a following. Um, but it's also the combination of like, if the, celeb uh, the celeb celebrity are uh, able to build that personal connection, um, and also at the same time, if the technology can support that, because one KPI I'm looking at is that, can you build a product that you can scale like thousands or millions of one-to-one -one communication at the same time? And can you also make the audience who engage with your content every five minutes? So it's a very different product design <laughs> mindset uh, compared to broadcasting that a lot of the pop culture celebrity used to. Web3 and celebrities are something that are not doing well together. I think Web3 is about communities, and communities, uh, they want to build what they, they think is good for them. They don't want to have anything imposed. That's why uh, some uh, projects that are trying to build their own idea impose to the community, community they don't want to have imposing anything to them. They want to be the builder of their own community. So, for example, um, as public pressure, we have a huge village on Minecraft that was built from our community, that we have more than 100 builders. Mm -hmm. And now the village, you take uh, like uh, around six hours to go around with avatars. And every day there is like uh, between 100 and 150 people in the, in the village because they build the village and every day they talk to each other, they said that today we, we have a prison, we have, <laughs> because once they burn something in the village, we have and a, a post concert, and this and that. <laughs> we have a concert, um, <laughs> but the, the community is there because they love it, because they build it. So Web3 is about what the community wants and, they, and, you, and the, pro, the product is built for the community. So celebrities not still really work for Web3 project, I would say. It's a collaboration between people, so to engage the community. So everyone does something amazing to grow uh, a project with the community, to enhance fans, um, to help label, to help artists. So, so it's not just about who you are yeah, exactly. and how big you are. Exactly. And Stefano, from from your world. No, I think talents is just one of the tools. I mean, uh, probably talents was the perfect Web two tool because at, at the end, people became the new brands. So it was easier to reach a target through somebody instead than through a brand or, or a magazine, for instance. <laughs> and um, they were great to engage a lot of, with a lot of people, and you were kind of able to target the people that you wanted to talk to. Uh, as uh, Julia and Francesca were saying today, it's just one of the tools, but at the end is what you do that is important that matters to the community because it's not anymore you know top down you basically 
throw a message to people and they, they get fed with, with your brand or your product. It's the other way around. They want something and you become the enabler for them to get that stuff. Um, and it's a total different uh, approach versus uh, 20, 30 years ago. Yeah, and I think also for Gen Z, they really don't like this imposing part of it. It's more to have micro influencer and they want to follow the, 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 influ the small influencer that is doing something they really like. They don't care anymore about also how these big like pop stars are, in not all of them, like, but they're imposing something. So the Gen Z doesn't like uh, they want something that's cool. They don't want. They don't want to be. They don't want to be rizzled or whatever. They no cap, right? I, I, my Gen Z slang is not good today. <laughs> Sorry. Let's open up some audience questions. Anybody have any questions? Wow. No. Okay. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so you see, ask and then. Okay. You can, you, you can ask. Break the ice. Exactly. Hello. Okay. Hello. Sorry. Uh, it's not so much a question, but more so highlighting something that was said on the panel that is really, really true that I don't know if we all really, really truly appreciate. Um, it's the last point about how um, the celebrities that worked were the ones that had the ability to engage with people. So we're working in Africa and we have, I'm sure many of you guys know Afrobeats, right? Burgeoning. Yep. So. Yep. Okay. Yep. <laughs> burgeoning music industry and um, I spent a lot of time talking to record producers about how Web3 is going to be adopted in Afrobeats and um, that's one of, the, one of the things that surfaced is that the Afrobeats stars that were big in the last decade like Burna Boy, Wizkid, David O, they're very good at the one to end and even their personalities so I guess the point I'm trying to say is that we're probably in a gap here where there's a whole new, and, I, and again, I'm going to think a little bit differently because like 70% of everyone in my country is under the age of 30, so I think more future forward. So we're probably in a gap right now where there's a new generation of artists who are naturally community builders, um, and it has to do with their personality, um, you know, like you're saying folks who are more open with their lives and such. So I, I just think that we're just probably a couple years away from, from seeing like yeah. real um, communities being built in music and art and Web3. Yeah, the problem of music is the, the big label that uh, they're really scared to move to Web3. So we need time to have like, uh, to bring the industry uh, on Web3 because they're kind of skeptical, they're scared to show the data a lot of time, unfortunately. Uh, but we, we want to also to educate them. That's, I think, about Web3, the importance about education, to educate the industries, to understand that anyway, blockchain is going to be in the next 10 years everywhere in all the industry, and they cannot be scared. They need to show the data at the end, at a certain point. Spotify needs to show the data, and they're not at the moment. So. We try to educate them. One last question. Ashton over here. Hiya. Uh, so I can speak on behalf of Gen Z. <laughs> um, I think what I find interesting is we're kind of currently facing an ecological crisis at an unprecedented rate. And I wonder how do you guys see in the cultural section of utilizing Web3. The utilization of Web3 to building a more ecologically balanced world and how artists and culture is gonna be involved in that. Or do you see it as purely an offset situation where artists are using themselves to raise finance and then offsetting that to positive projects? Or do you see Web3 being fundamental in creating a regenerative future? That's a, cut, that's a tough question, actually. Um, as, uh, like, uh, we, are, we, we, we are founder also of Web3 Music Association, so actually we are bringing also a project that they want to help uh, the climate, the climate change with music, 
So we are in talk with few of them, but of course a lot of artists that are really involved in the climate change. So um, for us it's really important, for example, like uh, we are multi-chain, but our main blockchain at the moment is Polkadot, that one is one of the lowest consumption blockchain of energy. Uh, and I think it's really important to, for the Web3 industry to be aware to, to the climate change that is uh, fundamental. So yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big problem that we try to, to help and, uh, and see what can we do. And may I add on the fashion industry, Web3 is a great tool because for the first time it gives you the opportunity to give uh, transparency potentially to the entire process of development, but even better on the process downstream after sales. So as a brand, I know who's buying my product. I will know who will buy my product, how many times it's going to pass by, how many times it will be repaired and what's their, its lifespan. And as a matter of fact, and here is where consumers come in, instead of uh, buying every year a new item from a brand, you could also buy second-hand item, and this keeps giving life to brand. Because life, a brand of a life exists only because us, as consumers, every year we invest in products, especially if we think about fashion. If we reuse always the same jacket for 10 years, we are all bankrupt, and Louis Vuitton will never make 20 billion a year. Which always <laughs> raised me the question, how many bags do they make? <laughs> but anyway, so it becomes fundamental, because it means that we, as producer, can produce less. You, as consumers, us, as consumers, will know more, and we can decide to give more life to a product, which means less production, but still generation of value for everyone, for the consumers, because there is an exchange of second-hand items for the producer, because they, through Web3 process, they can keep a portion of that resale market, and it's a win-win situation. It takes time, we are not there yet, it's a long process, but definitely that's, uh, you know, the way we are going. And as a matter of fact, there is another portion that I didn't mention, is how VR and AR comes into it, because f tomorrow I own a physical good and I could learn the virtual version of that good, and through the Google glasses or whoever glasses, you could see me wearing that item even if I don't have it on, because it's augmented or virtual reality. So that's another scale of extra revenues for brands, but even better, we don't need to generate that physical item anymore, so it could be less expensive, it could be more achievable. Uh, I mean, it's a new world that is uh, opening up, but I think we're still kind of far away. Any other comments from our panelists? Yeah, last, last, last comment here. Um, maybe about also generation. I think um, uh, we actually just talk about that when, when we're downstairs. Like, uh, I do think that also like Web three or digital first like experience will really catch up uh, when the Gen Z becomes like the main force of this society, and that will be the time that they not only want it but they demand it. And I think it will come very soon in a few years.